Hey guys, pardon me here. I'm doing a little bit of multitasking. I'm pulling up my laptop now. It's uh, 12.50 a.m. Utah. Date changed already. We're still on Tuesday morning. Um, so I'm in a, another security Reddit now. Uh, pretty much filled with people that actually know what they're doing as opposed to the uh, stupid Reddit, uh, the stupid community. Um, something came up in our subreddit that I figured was worth talking about. And that's um, pretty much like, you know, I, I don't know how to articulate it. Fem the female versus male uh, anatomy, the female versus male stature, you know, as far as like, oh, you know, males can overpower women. So that was an interesting topic, an in interesting pretty much debate that we had. Uh, one person came into the chat and was like, you know, you're all woke, blah, 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 blah. So I just kind of want to talk on that real fast. Um, not the woke stuff, but just the topic in general. And I'm plugging in my laptop, so pardon me as I'm talking and whatnot. Ah, my logo's showing. That's why I have a cover garment. <laughs> um... So, yeah, uh, you know, say a 120-pound female versus a 200-pound male, um, that female is going to be easily overpowered. That female is going to be easily overpowered. And I brought up the... Oh, no, phone dropped. Sorry. Uh, I brought up the topic of, well, that's why, you know, you need... You, uh, you should always have OC spray or some other form of less lethal implement on you while you're doing, you know, your, your gig. Um, and somebody was like, yeah, but most LP nowadays is handcuffed down like Allied is to where, you know, you've got Allied dr type draconian policies to where you're handcuffed down in policy and you can't really do shit. Well, that may be true. So this, I didn't say this in the Reddit group, but now I'm saying this in my film. This is where you have to ask yourself the hard question. If I'm being handcuffed down to allied level policies to where we're hands off, you know, LP strictly observe and report and whatnot, do I carry things against policy to protect my own life knowing that if I use this implement, if I use OC, if I use this baton, that I shouldn't be carrying per company policy, am I prepared to lose my job for my life? And by that I mean, if I use this OC against company policy, chances are very good I'm gonna be fired. But at the same time, I'm still gonna be alive. Because yes, if I'm a 120 pound female and I'm going up against a 200 pound dude, um, you're gonna lose. Point blank, plain and simple, you are going to lose. Which brings into the discussion of less lethal implements. I've, I've, I, I teach my security officers to spray and scoot. Well, I haven't taught anybody yet. I've only had my, I've only had my recertified Saving our national credentials since the beginning of August. So I'm about, I've had my credential for about a month now. It expired and I had to recertify. So now my credential is active again, yay. But so now I can start instructing people again. But that's what I always taught my, my folks before my credential expired. Spray and scoot. I, I, hate to use, I hate to use life fire terms. I hate, I hate to use terms we would normally associate with deadly force, but shoot and move. You're going to discharge the spray, and then you're going to scoot. You're going to get off the X. That's the same principle here as far as when we're talking about lethal and less lethal force. Shoot, move. And the, in the discussion of pepper spray, you spray and scoot. Shoot, move, spray and scoot. Either way, you're, going to, you're getting off the X. And OC is meant to be used defensively. Give them their dose. Get the hell out. Get the hell out of the area. You don't use, I, I don't like the idea of using OC and moving into an area to handcuff somebody. Now, is that, is that a valid use? That's debatable. And I'm not a lawyer. I'm not, you know, a use of force. I'm not Masada Ayub. I'm not 
freaking Chuck Haggard. I'm not any of these big name experts within our field. I'm just a, I'm just a regular line officer who has been there, done that. I've been on the stand for security companies and I've had to articulate my training and I've had to go to bat for my company as far as, hey, I'm the instructor for XYZ security and this is my curriculum. I For tasers, I use the Axon manufacturer curriculum and I stick to the Axon manufacturer curriculum. I download that curriculum before my class. I check for any updates and I, you know, that's the curriculum I use. I use the most up-to-date curriculum um, and I download it days, sometimes hours before I give a class. That way I make sure I have the freshest information. So that's, that's just my, my short and sweet of it is, you know, we, we, talk about, we talk about less lethal and lethal force all the time, but these are the nitty gritties in security that aren't discussed a lot. It's, it's just about body types, body stature, and whatnot. I mean, <laughs> I'm, af I'm afraid to admit it, but guys, yeah, this side, I want to keep my logo hidden. Guys, I'm developing a belly. I have to trim it down. I have to start doing PT again. All right, but I'm like five six, five seven. Starting start, I don't know, I don't know what my weight's at. When I, when the U.S. Army weighed me a couple months back, when I was possibly getting in a, uh, a chemical warfare security position, um, they said I was like one sixty, one seventy something. I think I was like one sixty something, one seventy something. Um, obviously, it's probably changed now that I, now that I'm developing that belly. And I, I'm owning that on camera. Yeah, I'm probably getting overweight now. Now I've started doing PT again. I haven't PT'd since I was in the Civil Air Patrol years ago. All right, I haven't had a regular regiment at all. I've, I'm getting to the age now where I think my metabolism is starting to uh, catch up to me. Because when I was growing up, and whatnot, I could eat whatever the fuck I wanted. And I could, you know, I could drink and eat and whatever. I could do whatever I wanted. I don't think that's the case anymore now that I'm starting to develop this belly. I'm like, I think that metabolism is starting to go as far as now I have to start thinking about these things. So that's something I'm admitting on camera. I own it. Now I, now I got to start doing PT again. Now I got to start doing fitness again. Now I got to start, you know, keeping myself in check. And that goes actually to what we're talking about. You know, I'm 5'6", don't know my weight, but I'm 5'6", five, 5'7", five, all right? People will go, oh, you're small fry. Well, guys, I did EP with the FAA, okay? Looks are deceiving. I do, I, sure, I'm like, I'm lanky, all right? I'm a twig. My arms are twigs. But I've been there, done that in security. Not to sound arrogant or cocky, but I've, I've done residential. I've done alarm work. I've done vehicle work. I've done HOAs. I've done, you know, those private gated neighborhoods. I did all there is to do in Vegas. And so I've been there, done that. And a lot of people go, oh, you're a twig, you're nothing. Yeah, I'm not a bodybuilder, all right? But I've been there, done that enough to have experience. And with my instructor credentials and whatnot, I know how to work a baton. I know how to do OC. Obviously, I know how to work a taser. Tasers are tasers, but still. I know I'm an instructor and all that stuff. So I know, I know enough about those implements to be able to tactically use them. And that's something you've got to keep in mind within this industry as far as your stature. And by stature, I mean your weight, your size, everything. Again, I'm a twig. I own that. But at the same time, I got it. I don't need to be, I don't need to be able to take somebody down purely with, with my body weight. I know how to use my implements. So that's, that's just a short, short little tidbit for y'all about, you know, body weight and stature and, you know, the, I don't know how to articulate it, the basic human anatomy. We're talking males versus females in these positions, such as LP, loss prevention, you know, your Macy's LP or whatever. Um, and like I said at the beginning, you have, you have, you sometimes have to ask yourself those questions. Am I prepared to carry an implement knowing damn well it's against policy 
And as soon as I use said implement, I'm going to be either written up, I'm going to be dressed down really hard and yelled at, or they're just going to flat out wash their hands of me at that point. But I'm still going to be alive. These are the hard questions you have to ask yourself in private security in general. You know, I don't condone it at all, but, you know, those are questions people ask themselves every day in this industry. Those are the hard questions people, you know, people keep in their heads is, I have this. I know it's against my, my company policies. I know it's against my company rules. But I, I'm, if it came down to it, I'm going to say fuck the rules and worry about my life first. So, again, just like any other video I put out there, little things to think about, guys. But anyways... That's all I have for y'all. I could ramble on and on and on, but at this point, it's just going to be nonsense. So that's all I got. Mike here at the Professional Security Journal. Y'all stay safe. Take it easy. Take pride in all that you do. Stay vigilant. And other than that, again, take it easy out there. Uh, the next coming month, from September to October, we will be um, revisiting my, my career. I'm going to be taking a trip down memory lane with you guys. In between these educational videos that I put out, these little tidbits that I put out for y'all to think about, uh, in the next month or so, we will be revisiting my resume. Or, excuse me, we will be taking a trip down memory lane. We will be re uh, visiting my career. And uh, it's going to go up to October. And October 1st, I will be putting out a video. Um, and it's going to be, you know, my, my look back at... The worst night of my life, what made me go into security in the first place. I know I just put out a video about it, but um, I want to do something on the date of when it happened, October 1st, 2023, uh, six years later after Route 91. So that's kind of, that's going to kind of be the lead up is I want to look, I want to look at my resume, take a trip down memory lane up to October. And then on the day of, uh, there's going to be, there's going to be a video about that night uh, put out on the date of. And then, of course, I'm going to be putting out these little snippets for y'all here and there. Um, I don't want to say re-uploads are coming anymore because I, 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 I keep feeling bad. Like, oh, I'm committing to it. And then, oh, it doesn't happen. But um, I promise re-uploads are coming. I don't know when. <laughs> but re-uploads are coming. I'm, I'm planning on putting out all the body armor videos that went out from the old uh, old security journal. Uh, those videos will come back at, at a certain point the next month. Um, and they will they will come out all at once. So I'll have I'll have a, a, a playlist of just old old videos. I'm gonna re-upload them all at once. Maybe tonight, probably tonight actually. So I'll have a playlist of all the old videos that are uh, are coming back to the surface. But um, yeah. So just a short little snippet for you guys. Anyways, I've rambled on, I've rambled on enough. I already did my little outro spiel. So anyways, I'm Mike here, Professional Security Journal. Y'all take it easy out there. Have a good one, guys. Night shift. <laughs> <laughs>